rumored fight that I happen to, tr- to believe uh, to be true is Max Holloway versus Tony Ferguson, but there's a lot on this. I'm not sure where to start with unpacking it. I mean, right off the bat, you look at it and go, ooh, ooh yeah, I want to see that fight, right? Here's the thing with these guys. If you're going to have somebody that you think can beat Max Holloway, you're going to bring out the punches and the kicks and the wrestling, and you're going to be wrong. The thing that you have to make sure that the opponent has, if he's going to have any chance to beat Max, is a gas tank. Can he hold up for 25 minutes? Because Max is one of the very few guys through the history of the sport who has weaponized pace. And it is the greatest weapon you can bring into an ass-whipping contest. So if you want somebody to go across from him and beat him, you have to be able to make sure you can check that box. Let's look at Tony Ferguson. If you want somebody to beat Tony Ferguson, before you talk about the punches and the kicks and the grapple and the submission, you have to make sure that they can hold up for 25 minutes. Because Tony Ferguson is one of the few guys in the history of this sport to weaponize pace. And he will go all goddamn day and is intimidating and it buckles guys. And they both bring it to the table. So now we can have a conversation on who's going to win. Before you look at that fight, though, you have to. There's a lot of lessons here, guys. Let me go through this real quick. The bigger storyline, what is going to happen with Mac? All of us are a little tired of people leaving divisions behind. Myself, too. I love the parody, and I love that somebody can go up. I love the champ, champ thing. I love the champ, champ, champ thing. I love grabbing as much hardware as you possibly can if that's your goal, and you've only got an X amount of window to do it. I love it. I will also acknowledge that to put everybody else in the locker room with similar goals and dreams and just as much work ethic and sacrifice on hold of their ultimate aspiration is unfair. So what do you do, and what are you going to do in this case? Max going up to 155, jumping right in the mix against Tony. Does he do that belt and toe? If he's officially becoming a 155-pounder and he's going on a run, does he give up his belt? Because that, in many ways, would be unprecedented. If he was to go up for a fight that was not for a belt, I would feel terrible for him. If this is what he's elected to do, I'd be happy for him. If they want to make an interim championship, don't forget the current champion is out. And not only is he out and stuck in detention, he's now publicly saying, I'm not even coming back when that detention's up. I'm sitting even longer. Okay, well, we got to take it your word at some point. We got to get on with it. If you're going to tell me we're going to get Tony and Max and you're going to tell me they're going to have to go out there for 25 minutes, I think I'm right to then tell you that some piece of hardware has to be up on the line. That has not been discussed. I am not reporting to you that that is for an interim championship of any kind. But if you're going to take Max's belt away, and I don't know that they are, if they are, you either have to give him a title opportunity or you have to sit him down and in no uncertain terms promise that the winner of this fight fights for the belt next. That seems like a hard promise to me. For me, that seems like a harder promise to make. Because you have so many great options at 155. So, so many. All of a sudden, Ally Quinn just doesn't exist. Are you going to try to tell me that? Oh, please. Kevin Lee doesn't matter because he's coming off a loss to Ally, uh, Ally Quinn. Oh, please. Please, I'll lose respect for you if you try to tell me that. You try to have this whole discussion and only talk about Connor and Khabib? You try to have this whole discussion and slip in Nate Diaz? And you don't ever bring up Dustin Poirier? Please. You and I are done talking MMA because I just lost respect for you. The other side of this equation, let's take a look at the facts that it is going to be Max and Khabib. I apologize, Tony. Poirier, who has been the odd man out and who has been slighted, who has been given great opportunities, made the most of them, and I'm talking about working up his way up the card. I'm talking about main slot. Then I'm talking about co-main event slot. Then I'm talking about headlining spot. He was given a very big fight with Nate Diaz. It was to be at Madison Square Garden. So the company did attempt to make right with Poirier. Somewhere, Poirier got injured. The fight didn't happen. That doesn't mean he gets punished and kicked to the curb. I'm just adding that for the story. The company did try to make right, and he, he was going to get the recognition he needed. Now he's back, though. And he deserves to be in the mix, and he deserves to be in the conversation. 
But when Max and Tony got rumored, Poirier weighed in on social media and said, you know, you might as well just release me. If all the big fights are going to go to these other guys, you might as well just release me. I see where that frustration comes, and I take no pleasure in it. He is as tough as an old leather boot. He came up the slow and the long way, and if you ever meet him, he's as nice of a guy as you're going to come across. And I can't say that many times in this sport. There's a lot of jerks out there, but Dustin Poirier isn't one of them. And I would love for something good to happen to him. I must tell you, politely and humbly, a correction that needs to be made, okay? Max had just beat Ortega to give you guys the timeline. When he beat Ortega, he stopped him on his feet in the fourth round, and it was so bad the referee had to step in there. It was a rare kind of a beating from a rare kind of a pace from a rare kind of fighter. And it caught everybody's attention. Within a week of that, Tony Ferguson and Max Holloway, and I can't remember in what order, but they got into it out of nowhere, somewhere on social media, and Dana White even weighed in to say, I love it. I'm just telling you the story. And if that may frustrate you that social media can steer a guy's career, then you're looking at this wrong. Because I could give you 20 more stories off the top of my head in the last 30 days without even looking at the phone to tell you where it did. So instead of being frustrated by it, you need to observe this and you need to copy it. There are two approaches here. As politely as I can be, to somebody I, put, I respect tremendously in Dustin Poirier, but there are two approaches. One is to do everything right and then sit by your phone. The other one is to pick up your phone and pick a fight. And you can look at Max and Tony, who figured this out themselves, and Dana was the last to the table, but they got their way. Or you could go back a little further to Connor versus Mayweather, where Dana White was the last one to the table, but he liked it and they got their way. Or I could tell you the 20 other times in between where two fighters put it together on their own, took it to the public, the public said yes, and Dana White signed off. I want you all to be successful in this sport. To understand how to be successful is tricky, and the landscape changes fast. To not even be able to imitate success is frustrating. To not be able to look at somebody who's getting it their way, their time, and then go and copy that is baffling to me. I don't pick on Dustin at all, and I sure hope this message wasn't told that way, and I want something really special to happen for him, and there's still some players out there, and I still think that it can and will, and he does deserve it. But the miss on this is to think, okay, I've already done it. I did my business. I handled Eddie. I handled Gaethje. I did the press conferences for Nate. People loved it. Something good's going to happen to me. We have incredibly short-term memories. And it reminds me of a fortune cookie I got when I was nine years old. And it simply said, success is something that people need to be reminded of often. I had no idea what it meant, and I asked my mother, and she explained it to me. No matter how good you looked or what you won last week, people will doubt you this week, which is why you need to show up again and again and keep on getting the medal. And I got it. And this business is guilty of it. And Francis Sangano, as great as he looked and as great as he did, in dealing with the pressures and walking into a five-round atmosphere and being one of the very few men in the history of the world to get over on Cain Velasquez, had his manager or trainer go up behind the curtain and tap Dana White on the shoulder and say, we would like a title shot. Four minutes later, the champion named Daniel Cormier was live on SportsCenter and Ariel Hawani asked him if he was going to give Francis the title shot. Daniel Cormier answered the question honestly, which was to say he didn't ask for one, which was true, 
when Francis was in the ring in front of the world with a microphone in his hand, he did not ask for a title shot, of which the champ was home and watching. And four minutes later, went on the biggest sports channel on the goddamn world and answered a question honestly, which was to say he didn't ask for one. Do not wait by your phone to ring. Pick up your phone and make the call. 